What is happening, sports fans? It's your main man, Matt, rocking it solo from the DFS 5-pack. It is Friday, September 10th. Hopefully everyone enjoyed week or night one of the NFL last night. Really good game. Tampa pulled it, pulled it through, pulled through in the end, excuse me. Uh, but not before it was a little bit closer than people anticipated. Dallas showed up. Uh, offensive shootout, 60 combined points, and it was a fun one. Uh, pretty weak MLB slate over here, but I'm excited to get right back on the bus tonight. Uh, Friday night slates are my jam. I like this one quite a bit. We got NFL week one this weekend, so all good things, and uh, let's dive in. So Ryan and I will be coming out with our members only NFL video this afternoon. That will actually be only for members. This one, as you guys know, been mo been making most of them for uh, public as well, just because don't have a ton of viewers and uh, want to give you guys really a glimpse into what we do and what we're going to do for the NFL season. So with that being said, let me dive in. So as far as pitching options go, um, one second, guys. All righty. Sorry about that, guys. All right. So as far as pitching options go, got some good ones on this slate. Standing out is the top guy is going to be Robbie Ray. I mean, he has just been phenomenal over the past month. Really just having a really good year. He's right up there with the AL Cy Young for the AL Cy Young. And uh, see no reason we can't like him tonight. You know, obviously a little bit of a ballpark downgrade for him going into Camden Yards. But Baltimore is certainly not a team we're afraid of. And with Rodone, like the other guy over 10K, I think it's it's clear that Ray is the guy. As far as Rodone goes, like, he's got great stuff, but there's no reason for the White Sox to push him here. He's thrown 67 and 77 pitches in his two starts since returning. He might throw 85, 90 maybe here, but I doubt more than that. The spot's tough against the Red Sox. I'd just rather go elsewhere. You know, he's contrarian, but there's other contrarian guys I like more. Tyler Malley consistently better on the road than at home. I think Malley's in play here. Uh, we get to a group of guys who are have who have high upside but aren't necessarily the safest in the world, and Malley certainly fits that bill. Uh, decent spot in St. Louis against the Cardinals. They're playing okay ball right now. Malley can struggle with righty power, though, so I don't know. I don't feel good about Malley. And kind of the same thing about Musgrove, who – and. I, I like Musgrove uh, here. He's going to get no ownership. The spot is really tough, but you've got a Dodgers team who has lost a couple in a row and is now, um, you know, coming back from a decently long road trip. Let me just see one thing here. So Atlanta, what Atlanta? Dodgers, why am I? I just had to draw a blank for a second. So the Dodgers, yeah, they were just not a crazy long road trip, but they were they've been gone for the past week. Now it's the first game back home tonight. Padres are basically in must win mode every game. This should be a good series. I think Musgrove and and the Dodgers are both in play in tournaments and in cash games. Tough to get to either of them, uh, just because the the volatility in, in both sides when you got a good pitcher like Musgrove going up against a great offense in the Dodgers. Jordan Montgomery, I'm not trying to spend 9-4 on him, not for me here. Might get pinch hit early because, you know, might get pulled early, excuse me, because the pitcher, pitcher's hitting the NL, and it's, it's not usual for the Yankees pitchers. So that might, you know, limit his workload a bit more than we'd like at that price point. Just no thanks. Urias reminds me of uh, Musgrove a little bit. I, I think Urias is good. Uh, the spot is tough against the Dodgers, or against the Padres, excuse me, but Man, it, it reminds me a lot of Musgrove versus the Dodgers in that, you know, both sides have upside. It's hard to, you know, if you're making one lineup, want to get to either pitcher or either offense in this game. But if you're making a bunch, I think it's the smart move to do so. Framber Valdez getting a little bit of ownership, and he makes sense. He wasn't, wasn't very good last time out, but tough spot against San Diego. We just talked about them, and it had been rock solid before that, so. I don't love Valdez here, but at 9,100, I think he's certainly in play. Tanner Houck, 
he's got good stuff. I'm a big fan of his stuff. He doesn't go deep into the game, though. And in this spot against the good White Sox lineup, he's pretty expensive. No thank you. Otani is kind of like the Musgrove and Arias of the world and that he's legit. I mean, Otani is a really good starter. Doesn't get much tougher than going into Houston though, to face these Astros. If I had to pick a side, though, you know, ownership would dictate that a lot. Like if Otani or the Astros were pulling in a lot of ownership, that would change things. Uh, as far as it stands now, um, let's see here. Houston getting no love. And Otani getting no love. So similar to the other game, the Dodgers game I talked about, I think he can make a reasonable tournament case for both sides. Bumgarner, no thanks. He's not in great form right now. I'm just not very interested. Uh, Trevor Rogers, no thanks. Tough spot. Marco, too expensive. Uh, Michael Watkin, Archer, no. Those guys are even pricey for what they are. Adrian Hauser coming off a gem. Wow, complete game shutout. I'm not buying what he's selling here, uh, so no thank you there. Taiwan Walker, no, I'm interested in the Yankees' bats here. We've seen Taiwan Walker get hit hard in the second half of the season, and I see no reason why that would change tonight. Eli Morgan, no thanks. Um, I think in tournaments he might be worth a look, considering Ian Anderson and Herman Marquez are getting a ton of love. But other than that, just on paper, not really interested. And then we get to Marquez and Anderson. So Marquez – not in great form right now, and I'm pretty sure if I were making this, this video with Ryan, he might be off Marquez here. But the price point, man, like 6800 for Marquez on the road, so not even in cores. Kind of a watered-down Phillies lineup. Sensatella, you know, threw a jet. Not a jet, but he was good last night. Marquez has got to be on the short list here at that price point. And then Ian Anderson, who I am a fan of. I think he's got very good stuff. He has not been good at his two starts in returning, though. He was okay against the Giants, but no Ks in either start. That's just absolutely wild. He's getting a ton of love, and I've seen, we've seen him struggle in this exact spot before. He came up last year and either made his debut or like his second start against the Marlins, and they hit him a little bit. On paper, this seems like a really good spot, and he's way too cheap. I guess I'm just a little bit hesitant to etch at very high ownership. That said, I'm an, I'm an Anderson fan, and on paper, it makes a lot of sense. Otto, no, I'm not looking to Otto here. Uh, in a tough spot against Oakland, no thanks. Blackburn, he's just not very good. So no Jacks, no thanks. John Lester, definitely not. Boyd, no, not in this spot. Daniel Lynch, no Chris Ellis, and... Really falter. It's going to be a, a no for me, dog. So, really, I understand why Anderson's pulling a ton of ownership. He's way too cheap for what we know. Excuse me, I had a hiccup real quick. And then I think Marquez is a really good look right above him. Uh, he's not pulling a ton of ownership right now, but I don't really believe that. And then Robbie Ray looks like the clear top guy. So, I think the Ray Anderson pairing will probably be the chalk. But I also think you'll see Valdez, who's in a great spot mixed in there. Um, who else would be mixed in there? Uh, Rodon. I don't know how much Rodon is going to be loved. Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, I think Anderson and um, Ray is going to be really popular. And it makes sense. I mean, it just makes a lot of sense. So let's talk about some offenses. If I'm building right now, um, I'm so torn on Marquez. Let me see one thing real quick. All right, sorry guys, I am back with you. Um, so, sorry, my phone is not pulling stuff up as quick as I would like. So, give me one second. We'll pull because, yeah, okay. Um, man, torn on Marquez, but if I'm building one lineup right now, I do think that, you know, especially in cash games, go Ray Anderson. 
the tournaments. I think there's a lot of pivots. Um, so this is the the pairing and cash games and tournaments. I do like a couple of these. Like I talked about, like the Musgroves. I like Musgrove here. I don't know what it is. Uh, I'm, you know, he had recently told his manager that he's ready to take the ball whenever he's feeling great. He's pitching the best he ever has. And while, you know, he hasn't pitched amazing every time out, I like a guy like that. And I mean, this series is big time. He's going to get no love. Sure, he is going to get blown up in this spot quite a bit. But the other side of it is there's going to be, you know, quite a bit of times where he's really good and is dominating basically anyone who's facing him. So I like taking the chance on him here. And man, this is the one I remember. Otani, Otani. I don't. There's like not guys I love on this thing. It's difficult. So man, um, you mean I kind of like Valdez too. All right, Musgrove Valdez for me in tournaments right now. If I'm making one lineup right now, I think this might be it. Again, in cash games, I think it's Ray and um, Anderson. And, again, let's go Musgrove Ray for me right now, too. Why not? All right, so looking ahead at offenses, we have kind of a bullpen game for Philly against her mom, Marquez. So Colorado with a nice comfort behind win last night. I don't respect the Phillies bullpen. The Rockies are awful on the road, though. So probably a spot I just stay away. And as far as the Phillies go, now, as far as Colorado goes, if you want to pull pieces, Trevor Story is really cheap. McMahon hit a pinch hit homer last night. So at a really affordable $4,100 price tag, I don't mind getting there. And then Blackman's been pretty good recently. Not last. Actually, he's cooled down. So no thanks. Not a team I'm looking to stack really. One off, I'm fine. And then Philly, I respect Marquez a lot, even if I don't use him. They're really cheap, and they're going to get no love. So, yeah, Bryce Harper, who is hot. I mean, this is not in good form. So, I don't think you're crazy to look at some Philly bats against him. If I'm getting, like, one lineup tonight, it's probably not the place I want to go. I mean, there's just so many good spots, and Marquez is a good pitcher. Even when he doesn't have his best stuff, can still have good starts. You know, when he has his worst stuff, maybe not, but – you don't expect that any time out. So moving ahead, Toronto and Baltimore. So chalk pitcher and chalk stack, the Jays and Robbie Ray. Talked about Robbie Ray. Not overly interested in Baltimore here. They offer a little bit of leverage if you want to take a bat or two. Mount Castle, sure, I get it. But probably not where I go on this big slate. And as far as Toronto goes, I mean, they're the top stack on the board. And the ownership shows that. Getting a ton of love. Vlad is all of a sudden red hot again. I mean, we've seen this spot before. This is a tough fade with them in Baltimore. Really crappy bullpen coming off a big series win against the Yankees. In cash games, I think you want a lot of these guys. And in tournaments, it's, you know, fade at your own risk. So that's really how I see it. Um, and they got some cheap pieces to go along with the, like, more expensive ones. Corey Dickerson's 3400 uh, you know, they're not like cheap all over, but they're not crazy expensive. So Toronto cash game stack, top stack on the board. Mets and the Yankees. I'm seeing Taiwan Walker potentially or Tyler McGill pitching here. Not using either of those pitchers, but I like the Yankee stack more than it, more if it's Walker. Uh, although I still like them no matter what. We'll see what their lineup looks like with no DH tonight. If Stanton's in there, uh, he might not be. So we'll, we'll wait and see there. And Glaber Torres, not having a good year. The Yankee stack's in play for me. I, mean, I talk about them a lot. They're always in play for me when they're going to get no love. I don't think they stand out here, but I don't mind them either. So, you know, Rizzo, fine. I think the Yankees are in play, like nothing more, nothing less. Uh, as far as the Mets go, nah. You know, Montgomery's decent enough, good bullpen. Baez is hot right now, so I could see going to Javi Baez. Crushes lefties, big time power, speed upside. Yeah, actually, I like Javi Baez. Pete Alonso crushes lefties. Man, it'd be tough to get to Lindor, though. He's so shit. Oh, God, excuse me. Uh, I used him last night. He was god awful. Would have been nice if he had done anything. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, if you're stacking the match, sure, Lindor, but it's hard to want to like one off him for sure.
All right. So moving on to the Brewers and Indians. So the Brewers are a team that are getting a ton of love tonight, and they are just way too cheap. Colton Wong, they add the DH first off. So you got Colton Wong leading off at 3,400. Then you move on down. Um, Yelich is 3,900. Avisel Garcia is 3,300. Lorenzo Cain's 2,200. Eduardo Escobar's 4K. Telez and Vogelbach are two. It makes no sense. I mean, you can use two. I mean, this is the type of lineup. You stack Milwaukee with uh, Musgrove and, and Ray. You're going to even have too much salary left. You go, I mean, you could even do like a game stack here if you want because I kind of like the Indian side, but let's say you, you go long. Yelich. I don't know. See, you want one of the first baseman. Let's forget Jose Ramirez there. So let's go like both of them might be in the lineup because it's a, uh, you know, they have D8. They have a DH tonight. So let's go Escobar. Um, I mean, whoever, no, Narvaez. You got four. I mean, that's crazy. Milwaukee's way too cheap. They're going to get way too much love. So in tournaments, I'll probably back off. But as a cheap value stack, they make a ton of sense. Their lineup will be out early. They're on the road. They have the DH. I get it. They're just going to be too overall for my liking. That said, smaller slate. So, like, I mean, not a smaller slate. Bigger slate, excuse me. So ownership won't be as concentrated as, like, the five game we saw last night. So if you want to use them, and, like, this would be a lineup. Or if I went like Musgrove Furious, or even this probably. I mean, Musgrove's going to be so low owned. We're like, this is the lineup I would stack Milwaukee. I would have no problem with it, even though I know that they're going to be over owned on their own. But it's not about the ownership or of one or two guys. It's about the lineup as a whole. And if I have Musgrove at like three percent, I'm okay using some chalky hitters if I think they're going to go off. All right. As far as Cleveland goes, I don't think they're crazy either. Adrian Hauser was really good last time out, but oftentimes when we see these. Her arms from gems. They come back down to earth, crashing back down to earth the next time out. Not always, but sometimes. So the Indian that you know, Jose Ramirez won't get a lot of love. Very expensive. He looks good right now. Fran Mill. Uh, these guys are way more expensive than Milwaukee. They're just not going to get love, and that intrigues the tournaments. Milwaukee's lineup is a lot more appealing, though, no doubt about it. All right, Tampa and the Tigers. We got Waka Archer against Matt Boyd. I mean, Detroit is just not a team I'm really looking to go after, hardly ever. I don't think they're crazy because Waka sucks. Archer's, we don't know who Archer is right now. But on this type of slate, man, it's just so hard for me to want to stack Detroit. Pieces, I'm fine with. Robbie Grossman. Uh, where's our boy? Uh, do. Yeah, I'm fine with like the top of their lineup. Jonathan Scope. Fine with it. If you want to go with like Haas, although he's cooled down since his monster start. More, it's about Tampa here. I think Tampa's definitely in play. Uh, like, they're more expensive than Milwaukee, but, I mean, their lineup's better. Even though Milwaukee's good, Tampa's really good. Coming off a big, big series for them, um, you know, in Boston. And now they're getting another nice hitters park. Their lineup's just really good. So Tampa's a stack I can definitely get, in bo- get on board with. More in tournaments, I think, because teams like Toronto and Milwaukee, like I mentioned, and the Royals, which we'll get to, are going to pull in a lot of ownership for cash games. But in tournaments, Tampa is right up there for me. The other one is going to be Atlanta. So uh, Atlanta is high, high on my short list. They're expensive. Makes it really hard to get to them. But that just means their ownership is going to be low. So. They got going late last night. Albies crushes lefties. You know, Riley obviously having a great year. Freeman, Homer, late crushes lefties. Swanson, affordable. Not affordable, under 5K at least. Duvall and Soler, very affordable. Um, you know, you'll probably have DR, or you will have DRNO back in the lineup. So, yeah, Atlanta's a team I'm highly interested in. We'll deal with the Rodgers right now. I know he hasn't pitched a ton recently. I mean, he's thrown 80. Yeah, so he's not, like, going deep, deep into games, but he's got a full workload. He just hasn't been great. Problem with him, he doesn't give up a ton of power. You see he doesn't give up a ton of home runs, but this Atlanta lineup is lethal, and they can go off on anyone, and Miami bullpen's not great. Also, I don't think you're crazy to use a couple pieces of Miami if you're not using Anderson. Like, Anderson is far from being impalable. I mean, he has been getting hit a little bit. No strikeouts. Guys are putting the ball in play. J. 
Jazz Chisholm, you know, right at the top of that lineup, very affordable. Their outfield, you know, is inconsistent but has big power. Jesus Santos, we saw with the monster game last week. De La Cruz was crushing for the Astros minor league system. He's had some big games in there. Lewis Brinson, not so much, but he's hitting the middle of the lineup. I don't hate him if you're, like, stacking them. And, listen, it's hard for me to want to stack them on a big slate like this, but the leverage is real against Anderson. All that said, I'm much more likely to just plug in Anderson and go about my business. All right, White Sox and Red Sox. Rodone against Tanner Houck. So, Houck has good stuff. Like I said, he's not going as deep as I'd like to to use him here, probably. But the White Sox stack, you know, they are coming home from a decently long road trip, I believe. Uh, not really. A couple series. So like a week, kind of like the uh, – was there as a blend earlier? The Dodgers. Um, you know, I respect Hauk enough. I don't know if I want to stack the White Sox here. Their lineup's so good, you can do it almost any time. It's not like they're going to be chalky. Pretty affordable, too, but Eloy, so he might not be in the lineup. Eh, I'm not excited about the White Sox here, even though I think they're in play technically. The Red Sox, um, if you tell me Rodon is really getting love, I'd actually be more interested in stacking the Red Sox than the White Sox here. That said, like Rodon's good. There's so many good spots on this slate. I'm not excited about stacking the Red Sox, although I want to check BBP for a second because I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little bit of ownage in a couple spots. So, not really. Um, and they are hitting 377 against him, but only in, in only 53 plate appearances. So I don't think you're crazy to pull a piece or two, but I don't think it's the most exciting spot in the world. I touched on Houston and Otani. Uh, both these sides are in play. I think that you can make a reasonable case for both of them in tournaments, that being Otani and the Astros offense. Um, I think it's a reasonable case to just not get to either because of that on a big slate like this. About the Angels against... Uh, uh, Fran Valdez, excuse me, I drew a blank. So much more interested in Valdez than the Angels' bats. Um, if you want to use a one-off or two, you know, Joe Adele, we've seen him with some good games recently. Big power upside, won't get any love. But Valdez is good. He's not the best DFS pitcher. He doesn't strike out a ton of guys, but he's a really good real-life pitcher. No need to, to use the Angels here in my mind. Royals and Twins. So we've got Daniel Lynch against... Griffin Jacks and the Royals were getting quite a bit of love. Um, they were pretty good in Baltimore. They've got the best catcher on the board in Salvador Perez with Merrifield leading off. Now his price has decreased. Alberto Mondesi is very affordable. Nicky Lopez with a big game last night. Uh, he's been good recently. So I get the Royal stack. They got cheap pieces to go along with those expensive good hitters. So they make sense. Another team I think you're looking at in cash games. To go along with the Blue Jays and Brewers of the world. In tournaments, though, I kind of like the Twins more. Uh, Daniel Lynch, I respect. I think he's got better overall stuff than does Griffin Jacks, but he's also young. The Twins, just an ownership play. I mean, their prices are finally up there now. I don't know why DK decided to price them up. So I'm interested in them. I mean, Buxton, we saw so chalky when he was cheap. Now he's expensive, won't get any love. He's got as high an upside as almost anyone in the game. So I like him a lot as a one-off. It's going to be very low. All right, Reds and Cardinals. We've got the uh, Reds and Cardinals. So John Lester against Tyler Malley. I mentioned Malley's been better on the road this year. Let me pull up the BVP against him. Nothing great. I mean, a few guys, and I mentioned he gives up righty power. So Molina's 9-20. I don't remember this during a day slavery uh, earlier this year. Goldschmidt's 8-20. You know, Aaron Otto's 4-13. And they, I mean, they've hit a bunch of home runs against him, too. Seven bombs and 140 plate appearances. It just goes, It's seven for Bader, Molina, Goldschmidt, and DeYoung. Seven bombs and, like, 65 plate appearances. So that's something. And then you got guys like Arenado and Tyler O'Neill with big time power. Uh, I'm hesitant of Mally here. I'm not really looking to stack St. Louis, but I am hesitant of Mally. All that said, if I had to pick a side, it'd probably be Mally. He's not getting on a lot. He's been better on the road. Um, he's been good against the Cardinals recently. So 
I'm scared by it, but I think he's definitely in play. All right, as far as the Reds go, they're definitely in play as well against John West. Got some guys with big numbers here. Castellanos, 7 of 16. Suarez, 16 of 45. Wow. Uh, Votto, no, not great, but, you know, lefty on lefty. And Lester used to be a lot better. Even, even guy like his Drupal Cabrera, 10 of 38. So Castellanos and Suarez look really good. They're affordable. I assume they'll get love. Um, but I think they're fine on this slate. I mentioned that the Royals, Blue Jays are getting more love and stuff. So I don't think you have to worry about the Reds being chalk. Uh, they will get love. But they're not going to be like chalk chalk. So know that going in. And if you're using a lineup with like Musgrove or anything, I think you can use teams like that easily. All right. After that, you got the A's and the Rangers. So we've got Glenn Otto against Paul Blackburn. Otto is a big unknown. You know, he's been okay in his two starts since coming up to the majors. He was traded to Texas in the Joey Gallo deal. He's only pitched like 40 innings above double A, though. So we do not know who he is. And Oakland, probably not going to get much love here. Uh, I can't imagine they do. Coming off a couple wins in a row, their offense hasn't been great. But I'm always interested in a low-owned Oakland team. Matt Olson, Starling Marte. Their lineup's just lethal. Matt Chapman. Now the ballpark's not great. You know, weather's not great, but low ownership is great for me. And I just really like Oakland, but they're going to be low owned, so they're highly in play for me. And then Texas, I don't think it's crazy either. You've got cheap teams. You mentioned Milwaukee. KC's got cheap pieces. They're going to be really popular. Well, Paul Blackburn's not very good. And Texas has been okay lately, like over the past couple weeks. I mean, check the game logs. Nate Lowe, monster game for me against Arizona the other day. My boy, Leody Tavares, leading off potentially at 2K. Like, come on. I like him quite a bit here. I mean, he the cap space is real. There's no reason he should be 2K. You got Pozo and Trevino, who are both hitting decent. Even Solak's been good recently. Like, we had a nice stretch. Of, so, yeah, like, Texas has a cheap value stack, especially if I'm, like, playing the night slate. Makes a lot of sense. I won't five, you know, go – Balls deep, four or five minutes stack them, but top of their lineup, you know, mixing in pieces for sure. Padres and Dodgers talked about this game earlier. I think you can make really good cases for the Dodgers and Padres offenses, but while also making cases for Musgrove and Murius. I'm kind of on the Padres side more. So Musgrove is my preferred pitcher, and the Padres offense, if I had to choose one, would be my preferred offense. That said, we know how good the Dodgers are. Uh, they're in play every slate they're on, and you know Musgrove, Musgrove should, shouldn't scare you off if you love them here. Uh, and it's that, that's kind of the same with the Padres and Urias. Um, you know, I think that Urias on this slate is in play as a con contrarian option in a tough spot, and so are the Padres. And you know, more likely not really getting to either side, but if I end up with like a Machado as a one-off. I got no issues with it. Our last but not least, we got Arizona and Seattle. We just saw this game, this matchup, I believe. Bumgarner against Marco. Uh, I think so. No, different games. But both pitchers weren't very good. Marco got lit up a little bit. He had been having a really good second half of the year. So I don't just want to like go back to Arizona because they hit him a little bit last time out. I also don't really want to spend $8,300 on Marco, though. So if I had to pick a side, it would probably be some Arizona bats. I mean, let's check. Like, Nick Ahmed leading off at 2800 He's actually in decent form right now. Another really cheap bat. Ketel Marte, he's actually good. Carson Kelly, he's pretty good. Um, I don't hate using a couple of Arizona bats. Oh, and then. Henry Ramos, switch hitter, was crushing in the minors, 2K. I like him a lot as a one-off. So that's a guy I'm interested in. And then the Seattle side, um, Bum Garner was not great the last time, but he walked a lot of guys. Uh, Seattle coming off a big series against Houston. Eh, not only interested in Seattle. Actually, on a smaller slate or like the night slate, I can actually see using Bum Garner. So... Take that for what it's worth. Never excited about that. I mean, I'm not really a Bumgarner guy, but I don't like the spot for the Mariners here, so that's kind of where I lean. 
that is what I got for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, uh, longer slate, so we went a little bit deeper today, about a half-hour video. But hope you guys enjoyed it. We got NFL starting this weekend. If you want to sign up for the fun, go check out the DFS 5-pack. We'd love to have you. Uh, and, yeah, I appreciate you guys, as always. Hope you have a fun, safe weekend. Thanks again. Just let me take this off, actually. And then I'll for real say goodbye. All right, you get double goodbye from me today, guys, because I didn't take off the screen share. So bye again. Thank you, as always, and uh, appreciate you uh, for the second time.